Mr. Watson here and in this video we're going to look at the training zones and how they can affect aerobic capacity. So identifying and maintaining the correct intensity to train at is essential to gain aerobic adaptations. Now if the intensity is too high the performer may fatigue quickly and adapt anaerobically, for example, learning to tolerate lactic acid. So although that might be a worthwhile adaptation, that is not the aim we were looking for. We're looking to gain aerobic adaptations. So this is usually at 80% and under at the maximum heart rate. On the other hand, if the intensity is too low, no, no adaptation may be made. This is means the workout, the training, it's too easy. Okay. So VO2 max can be measured or predicted. However, training at a certain percentage is hard to monitor and therefore heart rate is more commonly used as they closely correlate. So let's look at an example here. Okay, so this is the figure from the book, page 91. And based on a performer's age and training need, zones can be used to monitor intensity to ensure the correct type of structural adaptation occurs. For example, to improve the aerobic capacity, a heart rate within the aerobic zone should be maintained a heart rate between 140 to 160 beats per minute for around 10 to 40 minutes will enhance the aerobic capacity and blood circulation of a 20 year old. So that's just an example uh, relating to the figure there. And as you can see, the zones range from very light work to maximum. Okay. Now, the other figure I'd like to show you is the linear relationship between heart rate and VO2 max. Okay, so as we've just said, rather than trying to guess which percentage of VO2 max we're working at, we use heart rate. And this is because of this figure and how closely they correlate. Okay. Now, Carvonen's principle. This takes into account a performer's age and resting heart rate. Okay, this is used to calculate the correct training heart rate within a particular zone. Okay, so an individual's heart rate max can be estimated using this formula. So we've all seen this formula, it's very simple 220 minus your age gives your heart rate max measured in beats per minute. Okay, however, Carbonin's principle uses this formula training heart rate equals resting heart rate plus a percentage, and that percentage is your heart rate max minus your resting heart rate measured in beats per minute. So, right now, you might be thinking, What? So, let's have an example. OK, so you want a target heart rate um, for what to be achieved and maintained during exercise. And that might allow you to achieve aerobic adaptations. But what this principle suggests is that the heart rate should be slightly above the aerobic threshold. And this theory is based on the fact that VO2 max is proportional to heart rate. So let's take a look at the example. We have a 20-year-old cyclist. Their resting heart rate is 65 beats per minute, so close to bradycardia at 60 beats. Um, they've been advised to train at 75%, which is right in the middle of the aerobic zone, and maintain a heart rate of 166 beats per minute. Okay? So how did we get that 166 beats per minute? So let's break down Carbonin's principle, which uses this formula. 
firstly, we need to know our heart rate max. So our cyclist is 20 years old, so 220 minus 20 gives us 200 beats per minute. Secondly, we need to know what the heart rate reserve is. Now, the heart rate reserve is very simply your maximum heart rate, which we now know is 200 beats per minute, minus the resting heart rate. So that gives us a heart rate reserve of 135 beats per minute. Now, we've been advised to train at 75% of the heart rate reserve. So 75% of 135 equals 101 beats per minute. And then finally, we add this to the resting heart rate of 65, giving us our 166 beats per minute. Okay. So what I'd like you to do now is pause this screen and I want you to measure your resting heart rate. I want you to calculate your heart rate max and then using Carvonen's principle, calculate the heart rate you would need to maintain training to number one, increase fat metabolism at 65% intensity. So that's the first calculation you'll be doing. The second calculation, increase aerobic capacity at 75%. So very similar to this example, except your age will change. And thirdly, to increase lactate threshold at 85%. So just pause this screen and work out them three calculations. Okay, and once you've done that, that completes our lesson on aerobic capacity and training zones. Thank you.